Hi guys, I'm Darren, and in this video, we're going to be updating from iNav 2.6 to iNav 3.0. So the release candidate for iNav 3.0 has just dropped and of course in the future people will probably want to update to the full version when it comes out as well. So what I'm going to do is take you through the simple steps to get your model updated to iNav 3.0 as quickly as possible. Let's face it, you could have lots of models and you want to get them all done as quickly as possible. So as a caveat, this is from iNav 2.6, so that's 2.6.0 or 2.6.1. If you have a version earlier than that, you need to check the release notes to get up to 2.6 or just skip that and just follow the release notes for doing the full update. But anyway, let's get going. I'm just going to plug this in and then we'll get iNav on the desktop. So this is the iNav 3.0 release candidate one configurator. So if you're running the final release version, there may be a couple of subtle changes, but everything pretty much should be there. So the first thing that we're going to do, we've obviously just plugged in the lead. So I'm going to connect and you'll notice that nothing works. That's because there's so many changes behind the scenes that you just can't use any other version of iNav past with the 3.0 configurator. But the first thing that we want to do is just do a diff all to get all our settings off of our plane. So what we're going to do is just save that to file. And I'm just going to call this. So that's all we really need to do at the moment. What I'm going to do is disconnect, but I'm going to leave the plane plugged in. And what I'm going to do is open up that file that we've just created. Now, what you can do actually is if you make a copy of it, and then what we'll do is we'll work on the, the copy. That way, if you did want to go back to 2.6, you can just use the file that we've just made to set up your fresh install of 2.6. But what we want to do is just go through this. There's a couple of things that we want to check. First, obviously, we have up here the target that we want to use. So we will need that in a minute. But what we need to do is go through and find the profiles. Everything else is fine. There is some changes to um, the adjustments. So you'll find that these won't work. Uh, they, they will need to be set up again. So let's get rid of our adjustments. OSD should be all fine. Um, and what we really want is the profile. So if we go through to the profile and we're going to delete that. And now all we need to do is just save this file, close it down. And now we'll go back to configurator and into the firmware flasher. So what you need to do is if this is the full release, completely ignore, ignore this. We're just going to select the firmware like normal. But because we're dealing with a release candidate now, we just need to show unstable releases. And we just need to up here, make sure that full chip arrays is selected. So we need to select our flight controller board, which I'm using this one, Matek f one se ss 2 underscore CH6. And again, that was at the top of that file. Uh, let's show you again. So that's just up here. That's your the target that you want to use. So once you've selected that, we're going to choose INAV 3.0. And then we'll load the firmware online. And we're going to flash the firmware. Now, this is a full chip array. So all settings that you have on there will be wiped. Uh, that's why we create the diff file. So let's just let this do its thing and we'll be back in a sec. I wasn't paying attention, was I? Anyway, so that's done. So what we can do now is just connect to the flight controller. So this is the first difference here. And of course, we're a plane channel, so we have two options. So the first was is aeroplane with a tail. And I should just point out here, don't worry about the mixer so much. This is the physicality of the plane. So a plane with a tail will be something like a uh, Skyhunter. 
uh, Mini Talon, Ranger, Bixler, anything like that is a plane with a tail. A plane without a tail will be things like flying wings, like AR wings, um, forward swept wings, dracks and darts, planks like goblins, that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do, this is a Dart 250G, which is a tailless plane with a forward swept wing. So we're going to go plane without a tail. And now it's obviously going to do a few settings and it will uh, save and reboot itself. There we go. And when it comes back, we're just going to put all our settings straight back on there. So if we head down to the CLI, what we can do is load from file. And we want to find that Dart copy file. We should have probably renamed that Dart 250G INF 3.0, but we can do that later because there will be some changes happening. So let's just open that and we'll do an execute. Now you may have a couple of issues pop up because there are some things that have changed. So let's have a look at the errors because as I was mentioning, and I couldn't remember the name of, for the life of me, what it was, even though I made the change. All right, so where's the first error? Right, gyro LPF. We can ignore that because we're going to set that with a profile anyway. Uh, this is the one I was thinking of, MC Airmo type. The Airmo type now no longer has MC. So if you've changed your Airmo type to stick center once, like I have here, uh, you'll need to update that. So just copy and paste it and get rid of the MC at the front because the Airmo types apply to everything, not just multi-copters. Uh, landing speed, error invalid name, I'm not worried about that, we can sort that later. And something in the OSD, so we'll check that out in the tab, it'll be easier. So anyway, let's just save and it will reboot. So let's go into OSD because we had a problem there. But also we need to upload our font. So left scroll bar type altitude. I see left scroll bar I've had I have speed. They've changed the speed and right altitude. So they've changed the speed units for some reason. So that's that. So we'd save that. But also we'd go into our font manager, choose our preferred font and upload that. Because obviously we've done full chip erase, we need to upload the font again. Right, so what we now need to do is go into presets and what we're going to do this may seem like repetition but this is just in case in the diff file there is something that needed to be changed by this but again we're going to choose the airplane without a tail um, obviously if you have a plane with a tail you would choose that one so we're just going to choose that and apply it and at this point we're basically good to go we can look through, obviously, the calibration our accelerometer is already set. The mixer is already set to what we had it before. We have all our, um, actually, I need to change that to D shot. Um, ports are already set up. Everything is set up. So that's basically it. You can go out now and fly your plane. The only thing I would suggest is what has actually happened in those presets is if I go into the PID tuning tab, base settings are there for your plane now. So these are quite conservative. So you might find that your plane is a bit sluggish when you throw it again. Um, you could use the, the PIFF settings from your last uh, file, but it's really not recommended. All I would do is set this up and that's it go fly you can see that the rates are really low but again there is something in inav that will automatically tune your rates so what you really need to do is once you've done this get out get your plane up in the air and put it into auto tune mode but you need to be doing this in acro if you used to do it in angle that's no good anymore you you really need to be in acro and if you follow the video that I did with Mark where he's demonstrating auto-tune 
and he's doing uh, full deflections and then letting it settle you still need to do that and it might actually take longer to do the auto tune this time but that's because it's trying to get it precise and locked in so there are a couple of new features in iNav, but I'm not going to go into those. I'll cover those in another video. But this is really just about getting you updated so that you can go fly. So there we have it. We're now updated to iNav 3.0, and that process took a little over eight and a half minutes. Of course, I was blabbing quite a bit in that. So regularly, we're looking probably about three to four minutes to do a full update once you're in the swing of things. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Um, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to click the subscribe button wherever it is down there and also the bell icon. That will help get this video out to more people so they can learn how to do the update too. And also just get out there, have fun, fly models like you stole them. I'll see you on the next one.